Hey guys, so today I am off to the first day of four days of a conference. Now the first day today is going to be a cosmetics conference whereby I'll be doing something called anatomical dissection, which means I'll be putting fillers into the oven to show how the filler actually sits into the body and also how to reverse them as well if there are any complications. It's an all day conference which is going to be really exciting and really interesting, I'm really looking forward to it. the first day of the ASAPS conference and that was the anatomical dissection workshop day which I have to say was really interesting I thoroughly enjoyed it so the day basically comprised of two sections the first of which was a theoretical aspect to it and we had some of the top 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 cosmetic doctors out there plastic surgeons dermatologists dermatologists delivering this conference so the knowledge was really quite high in terms of theory we covered um, the skin, what makes up the skin, what is the aging process, what are the best ways of injecting and the safest ways as well, as well as touching upon um, the danger areas or the danger zones that one must really avoid when they're injecting. So a lot of it was a refresher, but it was also really important to hear other people's um, complications and other kind of situations that they've been in and how they've managed it themselves in their care. So looking into the different kind of aspects in more detail. So when we look at the skin, we look at the different elements of the skin. So usually we divide it into five sections. So you're looking at the superficial layer of the skin, which is the dermis, the epidermis, the subdermis, and then going on to the connective tissue. And then when you look at the other parts of the, the face as well, particularly in the skull or any other areas of the, the face, there are other sections there as well. So that would include, apart from the skin, this connected tissue, then you look at the aponeurosis, which is where the muscle fibers live and where all of the nerves live as well, and all of the arteries. So it's really important to know the anatomy of those areas because if you're injecting too superficially, you can end up with something called the Tyndall effect, which is basically where you get a bluish discoloration of the skin, um, which essentially is where filler has been injected too superficially, which can lead to some bruising. But then similarly, if you inject too deeply, you can then hit some of the arteries, which can lead to some very severe vascular comp complications. For example, in the rarest situation, something like blindness, that means where you're injecting filler into directly into an artery, which can lead to compression of the vessel, and that can lead to a compromise of the blood supply to the eye, which can then lead to blindness. So we went through all of these different complications and things that you must avoid. In Australia, they had their first um, episode of blindness from filler 10 days ago. So it's not uncommon. But it's not, it's not common and it's not uncommon as well. So it has happened and it has been known to happen. However, the course kind of told you about how to avoid those complications, where best to inject and what to do and what to look out for if you are suspecting that somebody's had a vascular occlusion or a complication from filling. Now, the most important thing to bear in mind that if somebody is injecting fillers and they have you know, come across um, a complication, such as injecting the filler into an artery, is making sure that you have the reversal antidote on site in your practice. Now, any cosmetic doctor out there should really have this on their site. They shouldn't really be injecting without something called hyalase on their premises. Now, the idea of that is that you need to um, flush a lot of it in to the area that you think has been compromise with the filler in a short amount of time. Now, particularly when you're looking at the eye and you think that you've caused blindness to somebody, you've only got a 90 minute window period to reverse that eye blindness. Now, it's not always successful and there is only a smaller number of people that actually are able to reverse it as long as you're acting quickly enough. However, in saying that, if you do, for example, hit an archery lower down the face, then it is much easier to reverse with higher lays as long as you're doing it very quickly and you're aware of what to look out for. The things to look out for, especially if you are injecting in that area and you've, um, say for example, you're injecting into the nasolabial fold and you think you've hit an artery, you will notice that the skin itself changes color. It won't be as pink and it won't be blanching as it used to. Now, you might notice that immediately, but you may also notice over a couple of days, the area becomes quite dark in color. You might get some pustules over the area as well. And some people will often mistake it to being an infection. So that's actually quite incorrect because then they'll go ahead and treat them with antibiotics and that doesn't respond 
the antibiotics because it's not an infection per se it's more that the vascular um, or the vessels have been compromised in that area so you end up with something called necrosis which is where the tissue actually dies off so it's really important to be aware of all of these complications because if it does happen in your practice then you know exactly what to treat them with one of the interesting things that they did say to us is that you should always have somebody on at hand or a friend of yours that's either a plastic surgeon or an ophthalmologist because if you do run into these complications and you send this person to a &E or emergency department they won't know how to deal with this they probably won't have high lays on site either so it's important to have a specialist who knows how to deal with these situations and they know how to do so quickly because your regular sort of um, doctor in the emergency department probably won't know much about cosmetic procedures and they won't know how to reverse it so that's a really important tip that they gave us during the course today one of the most interesting aspects of the course that I quite enjoyed was the second part of the course, which was the practical session. So as part of the course, they have got um, cadavers um, and they're cadaver heads that basically uh, people have kindly donated themselves after death to medical science and for us to, to learn more about. So it's something that we feel very grateful for. Um, and essentially what that enabled us to do was for the um, the plastic surgeons were able to dissect away the different aspects of the skin which were the skin the connective tissue the aponeurosis which is the muscle areas and then you could look at the tendons as well and the nerves and so on now what that allowed for us to do is to have a visual look at the different areas of the face and that helped to kind of solidify the learning that we've learned in terms of where the arteries go where the nerves go where to inject where the danger zones are but it kind of gives you that visual learning which is fantastic because sometimes it's really hard during, in, if you're reading a textbook to kind of understand exactly where the arteries and the nerves lie so seeing it visually was really quite satisfying now another thing that they kind of went through with us as well was injecting the filler on purpose into vessels so that was really interesting because it kind of showed you what happens if you do inject a filler into a vessel what does the vessel look like obviously in these patients you can't get blindness from injecting a filler but what happens is the vessel gets really hard and that's how you get an occlusion so that means that's that means that that's how you get a clot in the vessels and that can lead to blindness but one of the most satisfying parts of this whole practical session was when they actually dissolved that filler with hyalase so what the the, the facilitators did is they got some hyalase and they injected it around the vessel which actually just melted away the filler which was just so nice and satisfying to see because you know, not only do you use hyalase to dissolve filler in those kind of areas of vascular compromise, but you also use it if, for example, you've got a not very nice uh, look of your lips. So, for example, if, you know, you're not happy with the lips you've got, you can also use hyalase then to dissolve it too. And it just goes to show how hyalase works and how you can use it in those areas as well. I have to say, my thoughts on the, com the course itself, it was a very thorough course, it was very informative, we learnt lots and lots, um, lots of different very knowledgeable speakers um, that kind of gave us those presentations, but my feeling is that going, the more you know about cosmetics, the more worried you get and the more, I suppose, the more safer in terms of practice you want to practice because you know of all of the complications that are possible. So for me, it's just reinforced that safe practice is always best practice making sure that you thoroughly know all of your danger zones where your anatomy should should be and shouldn't be um, and knowing as well that there is variation between different groups of ethnicities for example um, people from caucasian backgrounds won't be the same as you will from um, other sort of asian backgrounds and in terms of that for example there is um, the majority so when you look at the arteries of the face, when you look at the angular artery, which is the artery that goes across the nose, um, it's not always placed in the same place in Asian patients as it is in Caucasian paces, uh, patients. So in uh, Caucasian patients, you have to be really careful when you're doing the non-surgical nose job because they will have that angular artery or that nose artery that goes down the midline of their nose, which can then in itself, if you inject in the incorrect placement, can lead to those vascular complications such as blindness and so on. So having an understanding of the different sort of ethnicities and backgrounds and their different um, anatomical variances is really important as well. But I thoroughly enjoyed the course. I am looking forward to the rest of the course whereby it's gonna be a conference down at the Gold Coast in the Excel Center. And we're gonna have various workshops again and lectures as well on, on safe, safe injecting, what the newest practices are in terms of injecting, needles versus cannulas, and so much more. So watch the space, I'll let you know how I get on. And yeah, I, so, thumbs up from me so far, well worth the 1400 or so dollars uh, that I paid for it. All right, guys, that's all for me for now. See you tomorrow. Take care and stay healthy.
inside the exhibition center there's so much going on you've got companies who are selling lasers anti-wrinkle treatments fillers and even the latest cosmetic products such as creams and skincare it's all going on inside here at the exhibition center on the non-surgical symposium 2018